Welcome to Trinity Lutheran Church on this Sunday, January 17th, the second Sunday of Epiphany. Let's begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon the people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God, holy God. You search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distress those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away, and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the, In the wake, wake of God's, God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community, community living out Christ's justice and, and the Spirit's reconciling peace. peace. Amen.
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. The Holy Gospel according to John, the first chapter. To you, O Lord. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite, in him there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. 
And Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There was a woman, a young woman who wanted to enter college. And as she was filling out the application forms, at a certain point her heart kind of sank. Because there was one question on the, on the application that said, are you a leader? Well, she was an honest person and conscientious. And so she answered honestly. She said, no, not really. And prepared for the worst. Well, sometime later, she got a letter from the college. And when she opened it, it read, you have been accepted to our college. As we were studying all the applications that it had been sent in, we discovered that we had 1,452 leaders, and we thought it was imperative that we have at least one follower. Following Jesus, that's what our lesson is about today. As Jesus says to Philip, follow me. This is the very beginning of the enlistment of the disciples as well. And so I wanted to share with you how at the very beginning and what it looks like for us to enter upon this path of discipleship. Well, first of all, following Jesus is a result of an up close and personal seeing of Jesus. As it has mentioned several times in John's Gospel, come and see. Jesus says to Andrew, come and see. Philip says to Nathaniel, when Nathaniel asks him, can anything good come out of Nazareth, huh? where Jesus was from? Philip says, come and see. The Samaritan woman at the well after her encounter with Jesus, she immediately goes into the town and says to the people there, come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Discipleship is about coming and seeing Jesus. For Jesus shows up in the most unlikely of places. Sometimes the most tragic of places and events. Elie Wiesel was a survivor of the Holocaust. He was interred, interned at uh, Auschwitz concentration camp. And one day he and the other prisoners observed a hanging. The SS hung two men and a boy. The two men died quickly because their weight pulled them down. But the boy being lighter lasted a long time. And after about a half an hour, Ellie heard this voice behind him say, where is God? Where is he? After some more time, the boy was still uh, hanging there. And finally when he died, that voice again behind him said, where is God now? And Ellie said he heard a voice within him say, where is God? He's there, hanging on those gallows. One of the distinctive aspects of Christianity is that we have a God who suffers, who enters our suffering as one who indeed suffers himself. And it's in places of suffering, therefore, that we will find God. But also, seeing him means knowing him, and that means engaging with him. You can't get to know Jesus from afar. Just like you can't see him very well from afar either. You have to come close and see. Brian 
Francis Stofferton in his biblical commentary, he told a story of himself. And it's a story of when he was on internship. And he says, I hate dancing. I hate square dancing. He says, I just think it's dumb. But on internship, there was a couples group that loved to go square dancing. And he felt kind of obligated as he got to know the congregation to get involved in this. Now, there was exactly enough people for four squares. So everybody had to dance every dance. And Stoffersen said that after a while, he began to really enjoy it. Even though he made several wrong turns, he really started to have fun. And he said he knows so, so many people who don't like something until they actually participate in it. And then it becomes fun. Getting to know Jesus is kind of like that way. And that's one of the reasons why Philip said to Nathaniel, come, come and experience Christ for yourself. This is part of the pathway to discipleship. Well, what will people see when they come and see Jesus? Well, many things. But one of them that comes out of our gospel for today is a new vision of Jesus. Nathaniel, when, Je when Jesus had said to him, I, I saw you under the fig tree and it seemed like supernatural knowledge, Nathaniel said, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. And Jesus said to him, have you believed because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. You will see the angels of heaven ascending and descending on the Son of Man. That's Jesus. And what he was referring to was a passage in the book of Genesis in which Jacob is on his way to Haran and he lays over at a town called Bethel for, for the night. And he falls asleep and he dreams about this ladder. And the angels of heaven are ascending and descending on the ladder. It's the point of contact between heaven and earth. And what Jesus was saying when he referred to that passage, he said the, the point of contact between God and, and earth is, is not a place. It's not Bethel. It's a person named Jesus. Jesus is our point of contact with God. Jesus is the point of contact between our sins and God's forgiveness. Jesus is the point of contact between our death and God's life. Jesus is the point of contact. And that's what we discover as we come and see. A professor and theologian by the name of Karl Barth, he was once lecturing at Princeton University and after the lecture, there was a question and answer session. And one of the students asked, Dr. Barth, don't you think that God has revealed himself in other religions and not just in Christianity? And Dr. Barth said something that just astounded them. He said, no, God does not reveal himself in any religion, including Christianity. God has revealed himself in Jesus Christ. That is the point of contact. And you know, we can see that everywhere. For example, there was a uh, lady by the name of Adwina uh, Gaylord, and she formed a, a founder of a place called the uh, Genesis House, and it was actually a place of hospitality and healing for prostitutes. And she said, I can see God everywhere. I see God in the events of my life. I see God in the relationships. I see God in our work here at Genesis House. She said, I really don't have to go into a 
special place to see God or to, or to pray to God for that matter. He just kind of pops up. And I thought of places like Facebook. God is in there. In the, in the images, I, people put pictures all over there and, and, and videos. And it's, it's delightful to, to watch the relationships between parents and children, between friends. I remember recently viewing uh, a, a set of four girls that were celebrating the engagement of one of the girls. And they were all in different poses. And one of them was kind of leaned over like this and she had her finger pointing up like this pointing to the one who was engaged, saying she is the one who is the object of this celebration. She is the one to pay attention to. Yeah. And how delightful for a friend to do that. There are stories that are tragic on Facebook too. And we need to ask and can ask, where is God in that story? Because he's everywhere. And what that means for us is that with humility and integrity, we can invite others to see Jesus, their point of contact with God as well. That's what Andrew did with his brother, Peter. He brought him to Jesus so he could see for himself. That's what Philip did to Nathaniel. That's what a Samaritan woman did to her townspeople after she had encountered Jesus. She went out into the town and said, come and see him man that told me everything I ever did. There was a youth group called Youth with a Mission, and they were serving for a time in Beijing, China. And they met a young man, a Chinese man, 22-year-old by the name of Lai. And as they engaged in conversation, they talked about faith, and I told them that he had been raised in an atheistic environment, and that he had never even heard of Jesus. And he also said that he was leaving Beijing and moving to another town, and so Lauren, one of the group, gave him a Bible and said to him, read this. Don't read it alone. Read it with a group of, of Christians who can help you understand it and who will help flesh out the words in life as you see their Christian living. About three months later, Lauren and the group went on, moved, went on their way to their next uh, station, and they met one of their fellows who happened to live in that town that Lai had moved to. And he said, Lai sends his greetings to you, and he's a member of my Bible study. So he took his advice, that Lauren's advice, and became engaged in a flesh and blood community where more and more he could see Jesus. Come and see the God who reveals himself in Jesus Christ. Come and see the God who enters the world's suffering and comes out relieving it. Then invite others to come and find themselves God's point of view, point of contact rather, with them. It's Jesus Christ. This is all part of the path of discipleship.
in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to Genesis, the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers, the congregation's response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. For the body of Christ gathered throughout the world and for all servants of the gospel that following Jesus, the church lives out its calling every day. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, and for all that God has marvelously made that we serve as wise stewards of the earth, our home. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For police officers and firefighters, for peacekeepers and military personnel, and for the leaders of governments that they provide protection to all people, especially the most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those lacking food or shelter, for those who are sick or grieving, and for those who are imprisoned or homebound. For we pray for Robert Strobel, and we pray for Butch and Melinda and Lee Penberthy as they ride a roller coaster that is their healing process. God console all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For our neighborhood, for visitors joining us for the first time or returning, and for those absent from our assembly that all who seek to know God are nourished by the word and the sacrament. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the saints who have gone before us, that they, their lives give us a vision of the gospel in action. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Um, the Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper he took the cup and gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet nourished in body and in spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
peace. Share the good news. Thanks be to God.